Good morning, and welcome to worship here as Resurrection Lutheran Church on this Palm Sunday, the Sunday of the Passion of our Lord. We are glad that the Spirit is gathering us together in worship. A welcome to our visitors that are with us here today, and a welcome to all of you who are joining us and worshiping with us online on our live stream. I hope on your way in, everyone was able to receive a palm frond. Go ahead and raise those palm fronds up into the air this morning as we begin. As you think about these palm fronds that we're waving in the air today, a word that we are going to be saying a number of times, particularly in the beginning of our service, is Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna is not just a word of praise or celebration or something that people shouted as Jesus entered into Jerusalem, but the very direct translation of Hosanna means save us. Deliver us. Help us. This word was shouted at Jesus, the one that people believed may be the Messiah, the one that came to deliver Israel and God's people. But here today, that word Hosanna helps us enter into our deepest prayers as God's people ourselves. Because is that not why we turn to God, turn to the presence of Christ is to hear those prayers where we desire in our deepest prayers of our hearts to be saved. To be saved from the forces of sin and those things that separate us from God. And to be saved from those forces that continue to perpetuate death and division in our world. Take just a moment. Search your heart. What do you desire that God saves us from? Shout it out for me this morning. War. war. God, deliver us from war. What else do you desire to be saved from? Homelessness, from unshelteredness, from the dehumanization of people who are suffering. God, save us. What else do you desire that God saves us from? Bad leaders. From what? Bad leaders. From bad leaders, from corrupt leaders, from people who perpetuate harm in our world from their places of power. What else? Thinking only about yourself. Say that again, Robert. Say, yeah, to save us as people. To save us from the things that hurt us and keep us from wholeness. From violence, from all forms of violence, from interpersonal violence, from violence that's done to neighbors or people in our lives, from war, from illness, from mental illness, from the things that separate us from God in our minds and our hearts and our souls, from crime, from the way that people are hurt by taking from one another, hunger, and the ways that there is injustice in the distribution of resources in our world. Substance abuse. Indifference and complacency. Hate. God, help us. God, deliver us. God, save us. Hosanna! 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 I invite you to rise in body or spirit as you are able. No, 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 hold on, hold on, not yet. Soon. <laughs> Together, bless these parade palms, O God of celebration. May they remind us of the simple joys of living. May we remember the excitement that comes with following Christ. Bless these protest palms, O God of justice. May they remind us that empire is not a thing of the past. May they make us bold and brave to stand up against injustice. Bless these funeral palms, O God of comfort. May they remind us of the road that lies ahead. May they encourage us in times of grief and pain. We give you thanks for the parade, the protest, the processional. Guide our steps through the holiest of weeks as we cry out together, Hosanna, Hosanna, 
Hosanna. Amen. Gospel according to Mark, the 11th chapter. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Praises rising, eyes are turning to you. In your presence, our fears are washed. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to walk with Jesus in obedience to your will and share in the glorious victory of the resurrection with the one who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. from grief I 
spent with sorrow and my years are spent with sighing and my strength it fails because of my misery and my bones waste away I am the scorn of them all and the horror of my friends They think they pray for me for cotton. I become a broken vessel, for I hear the whispering of your terror as the scheme together as they plot to take my life. But I trust him. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from your enemies. My trust is sin. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. But I trust in you. Say you are my God. My time are in your hand. Deliver me from my enemies. Our first reading today comes from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, the Lord wakens, wakens my ear to listen, as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The Lord God who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And the second reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. 
Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the sun, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. Palm branches, palm branches, filling the air. Palm branches, begging and singing everywhere. Hear the whole sound as I stop in the way. Palm branches, palm branches, invite any of our kids that are here this morning to go ahead and come on up and we'll spend a few minutes together. Hey Oliver, come on up. How are you this morning? Good. I heard you shout Hosanna over there a little bit earlier. Did you shout Hosanna? Yeah, there's been a bunch of us saying Hosanna this morning. It's sort of like we've been at a parade a little bit today, huh? Have you ever been to a parade? What's a parade like? And like a store. Is it sort of fun? Yeah, is it like is it fun to go to a parade and sometimes see people go by and yell and sometimes sing or even shout and clap? Sort of fun to be able to do that. And you can play at it. Yeah. I bet you that at a parade that happened a long, long time ago, a parade that Jesus was in, there were kids just like you that were singing and playing and having a good time seeing this person named Jesus go by. Because that's the parade that we're talking about today on this Palm Sunday. It's a parade in which the people were shouting Hosanna because they thought that Jesus, the person that was riding on a colt, on a donkey, that he was going to be the one to be able to show them God. And in a lot of ways, Jesus did. Jesus showed a lot of people how much God loves us. And so that's why people were so excited to wave palm branches and go and shout and be excited that he was coming. But today we're going to hear a little bit of a sad story about what happens after that parade. So we're going to hear a sad story about people that even some of those people that might have been at that parade, that they end up turning on Jesus. And they maybe are a little bit afraid of him. 
And some people really don't want him to be in Jerusalem, the city that he was in. And so they decide that he's going to die. And that's the story that we're going to hear is how Jesus, instead of getting upset and fighting back or running away, Jesus dies on a cross and is crucified to show us how much God loves us because Jesus was willing to be able to die. But we recognize that when we hear a story like this today that it gives us lots of different emotions. When we think about dying, does it make us sad? Yeah, it makes us sad. It can also be really confusing to wonder why somebody that people seem to love and really want to do good things all of a sudden would be rejected. It doesn't make any sense to us sometimes. And especially when we're really little, it really can leave us with a lot of questions. And so today, we are going to have the chance to be able to hear this story all together. And so if you have questions, I want you to be able, you have questions, I know you probably do. I want you to be able to talk to some of us. And so after church today, if you'd want to talk to me or talk to your sister Nora, talk to your grandma, you want to talk to your sister? Yep. Yep. Oh, you're going to go talk right now. <laughs> but it's okay to talk to each other because that's what this story is meant to help us do, is to ask questions and to feel things that God may want us to be able to feel. And so we can truly discover and understand who Jesus is. And so we read this story today and we hear it together, but we get to come back in one week on Easter Sunday and we get to hear the ending to the story. So remember this, even though you might have a lot of questions or want to talk about things after the story you hear today, that the yeah. The end of the story will come next week on Easter Sunday when we get to celebrate that Jesus was risen from the dead. <laughs> Oliver, it's been really good to talk to you this morning. <laughs> Can we bring our arms out nice, big, and wide? Bring your arms out nice, big, and wide. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for sending us Jesus who lived, who lived loved, 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 died, died and, was and was raised again to show us, to show us how, much you love us. how much you love us. We pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. All right, you can head back to your seats. Thanks, Oliver.
there is a question right in the middle of Mark's gospel. And I mean literally right in the middle, chapter 8, the exact middle of the entire book of Mark, when Jesus asks his disciples, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? On this Sunday of the Palms and this Sunday of the Passion of our Lord, the reading of the Passion story is meant to interpret that question. At the beginning of this Sunday, we gathered with palm branches and those crowds as Jesus entered Jerusalem, who with their words said, you are the Messiah, the one that has come to save and deliver us. But yet in the story of the Passion we will begin to see that question answered not just with the words of the people, but with the actions of humanity. The actions of those closest to Jesus, his own disciples, the crowds, people with power, all the way to Pontius Pilate, a representative of the empire. We will hear from the words of many that Jesus is a king, but no one truly understands what that means as their actions and the crucifixion that we will bear witness to represents how the world treats this one. And so for us today, as we hear this story again, let us keep that question right in the forefront of our reflections. Maybe releasing our standard doctrines or theologies that tell us who we believe Jesus to be and allowing the story to simply speak on its own to our hearts and minds anew today. Who do you say that I am? Jesus asked his disciples. Let us hear the story of how the world responds. Turn to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. Return to God with all your heart, the source of grace and I'm seeking the tender faithfulness of God. The Passion of Our Lord according to Mark, chapters 14 and 15. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why, why was, was the ointment wasted, wasted in this way? way? For this, this ointment could, could have been, been sold for more than 300 denarii and, and the, the money, money given, given to the poor. poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. 
On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house. The teacher asked, Where is my guest room where I meet I may eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread And after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, They went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You are all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet Not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us get be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The The one one I will will kiss kiss is the man. man. Arrest Arrest him and and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I was a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple, teaching, and you did not arrest me. 
but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, And he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none, for many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you're talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly, you are one of them. You are Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! him. Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. 
Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, king of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He, he saved, saved others. others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, listen he, is he is calling, calling for Elijah. Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let, let us see, see whether Elijah will come, come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that it was this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. This is the passion of our Lord.
Let us confess the communal faith of the church using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come to our time of prayer. Today there will not be spoken requests received. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. Prepare us to bear witness to God's suffering and death endured for our sake. Gather your people around the cross and comfort us with resurrection hope. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew your good creation and protect the balance of life on earth. Encourage the work of foresters, scientists, arborists, gardeners, and river keepers. We pray for the health of pollinating insects, songbirds, and native plants. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Establish peace and justice among the nations. Hold to account any with authority to judge others. Grant that courts, legislatures, and local governments will serve with integrity and compassion. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Bring hope to any who feel forsaken or forgotten. 
make a way for refugees and asylum seekers, reunite families enduring separation. We pray for any who are incarcerated, institutionalized, or in foster care, that they may know your love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Blessed one, our times are in your hand. Sustain us in discipleship throughout our lives and receive us into eternal life. Help us to accompany all who grieve and those who are facing death. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take a moment and share the peace with one another. Just tell tomorrow. I'm just doing the rest of it. As we prepare for this communion meal, we invite you to take a moment of gratitude and thankfulness for what God provides in our daily lives. Financial gifts and offerings can be placed in the offering plates as you come forward in a few moments. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as you are able. Let us pray. Jesus, our source of hope. You are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. May God be with you. Let us open our hearts. Let us give thanks to God. Blessed are you, O God, creator of heaven and earth. You rescued your covenant people. 
led them through wilderness journeys and taught them by the prophets that they may be freed and blessed to bless and serve others and experience your salvation and justice. And we, estranged and dying, captive and longing for life, are also freed and led by your spirit, named and claimed as your beloved, in and through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, to which we are joined in the waters of our baptism and around this table of grace. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, blessed it and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We celebrate as Resurrection Lutheran Church that all are welcome and invited to participate in this communion meal, particularly on this Sunday of the Passion of our Lord, we recognize that as we see Jesus on the cross suffering, that that is God's presence suffering with all of a suffering humanity, with those that have been rejected, those that have been excluded, those who have not been loved by our world. This meal is the sign of Christ's presence with us, not just for some, but truly for all. And for those who particularly have been rejected in our world, we extend this invitation today to all. For Christ is the host of this meal, and Christ embraces and loves you as you are in your race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender, or gender expression, age, or ability. Christ loves you as you are. Come and be nourished by these gifts of God's grace. This is bread for the journey and a feast for hungry hearts. Come.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. A few announcements here at the end of our worship service. Our Holy Week schedule is available in the new April Herald that was just released this last week, and that is available in print form on the Welcome Center in the Fellowship Hall. You can grab one of those as you're leaving today, and it has the full schedule of all of our services that are available this week. Please note that there are two services each on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. The noontime worship services are joint worship services with our East County Ministry Alliance partner congregations. Monday, Thursday, that service is at Gethsemane Lutheran, and on Good Friday, that service is here at Resurrection. There are both evening services on Thursday and Friday here at Resurrection at 7 p.m., and then next Sunday, March 31st, is Easter Sunday, and we will have one worship service here at 10 a.m. together as one community. Please join us for all of these Holy Week worship services uh, as we go ahead. There is also a community Easter egg hunt that will be taking place on Saturday, March 30th at 11 a.m. Jerry Sharp has been helping to organize that. There's still some Easter egg stuffing happening in the fellowship hall Please see him after worship if you'd like to help stuff some more Easter eggs in advance of that event. If you'd like to be here next Sunday, we're still looking for a couple more volunteers to help support the event. Talk to Jerry out in the fellowship hall. Jerry, raise your hand so everybody can see you. Thanks. And it'll be a great event with many different kids. And just as a note, we recognize that this event draws a number of the kids and women that live at... Shepherd's Door, uh, an outreach of the Portland Rescue Mission, which is right next door to us. And so this is a great way that we connect with some of our very physical neighbors here in our community. So please join us next Saturday for that event. I'd like to invite Sue Hershey, a representative from our council, to come forward, and she has an announcement to share with the congregation. Good morning. I'm not only representing the council, but also the finance committee today. Um, you might have read in the Herald that just came out this past week, the April one, that um, Bill Leonard is going to retire from our bookkeeper position at the church. Um, Bill is sitting right over there. I can see him. Yep. <laughs> um, Bill, has, Bill and Luann have actually been members here uh, for 17 years, and 11 of those years he's been our bookkeeper. So we really appreciate all that he's done. He's not done yet, though. Um, <laughs> we're, the council and the finance committee are still putting finishing touches on the transition. And Bill, of course, has graciously agreed to stay on as long as we need him to do that transition. Um, but we will be having a celebration for him um, in April. We'll let you know the date. Um, there will be cake. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and he's not going anywhere. Um, he has agreed that he will stay on in a volunteer support advisory capacity. So um, we get the best of both worlds. So anyway, we do wish him well in his retirement. And um, thank you, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And as Sue said, we will be sharing more in the next couple of weeks on how we can celebrate and thank Bill for his service and how we're preparing for that transition. Uh, three birthdays that we're celebrating this week. So happy birthday to Ron, to Meredith, and to Steve, and a happy anniversary to Jan and Dean Bakken. A round of applause for all celebrating life today. And now I invite you to rise in body or spirit as you are able Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, and renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
And now we lay down our palm branches. And with them, we lay down the idea that there is another way for you to be God. As the last echo of the final Hosanna fades, so does our hope that this journey can end in any other way. The week stretches ahead gloryless and painful. Whether we walk with all faith or none, we look toward the cross, knowing it is both the most human and most divine of all journeys. May we travel the road and walk together with courage, with love, and with the uneasy peace that is the gift of faith into this holiest of weeks. Amen. Amen.